Hello, this is the first in a series of instructional videos that Triple Helix 2363 is going to produce talking about and demonstrating how to build our version of our West Coast Drive. We are specifically targeting this at our new students that join the team who want to learn about what we do. Um, you don't need to know anything about robotics. You don't need to know anything about tools. We're going to be telling you um, all about our techniques and how to use tools safely. And we figure that this may also have a benefit for the wider FRC and first community at large. So we're going to put it out there on the internet so that anybody who wants to follow along or build a West Coast Drive train the way that we do it is welcome to do so. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, the history of the design that we use and then we'll, we'll talk in this episode about what exactly it is that we're going to be building. So at the end of 2017, we realized that we were going to have to redesign our drivetrain. Uh, we had a sponsor that had been fabricating the drive rails and our drivetrains for us since the summer of 2014 when we developed the design but they let us know during the 2017 build season that they would probably not going to be able to help us by um, machining those those drive rails in the future so if we were going to keep on using the design that we had developed over the years uh, we were going to have to figure out either we were going to have to find a new sponsor that could do it for uh, do that machining for us or buy a really expensive CNC milling machine or figure out some way that we could do that work ourselves by modifying the design so it didn't require precision machining the way that it did before. Um, there had at, at that point there had been quite a bit of new developments and new products come on the market uh, since 2014 when we had designed this um, drivetrain and we figured that uh, it was a good time for us to look around and see what was out there to help us in that process. We put together a list of features that we would like to implement in that drivetrain. Um, at this time there were a bunch of teams and there was a lot of chatter on Chief Delphi about the benefits of using um, three mini sims uh, in, a, in, in a gearbox that would drive one side of a, of a drivetrain and we wanted to see if we could put those the motors that were driving those gearboxes out over the wheels rather than inside of the frame where we had done it previously. Um, we were thinking we might like to try using a belt drive and we also wanted to make it so that um, we could tension the, uh, the tension in the belts or the chains or whatever it was that was driving our wheels. Um, in our previous, our previous version of the drivetrain, we had these drive rails on either side and we um, used precisely machined bearing bores to locate um, the axles for these for these wheels in locations where we if we put in brand new chains they were precisely tensioned. Um, these tubes are two inches tall by one and a half inches wide and they fit um, chains inside of them. Uh, two chains side by side. One chain runs along this area to drive this wheel. The other one runs along this area to drive the other wheel. Um, so we ended up doing a number of different changes. Um, first of all, we redesigned the gearboxes that we had been using. We had been using commercial off-the-shelf gearboxes uh, and we wanted to see if we could use the new laser cutter that we had built over the previous two years to make gearboxes uh, using that laser cutter. So we did that. That was one of the things that we did over the summer was designed, a gear, designed and built a gearbox um, that had um, laser cut Delrin plates on either side and then off the shelf 
internal components um, other than the shafts, which we, uh, which we made ourselves. So that was what was driving the center wheel. And then we, we ended up sticking with chains for this version of the drivetrain. We were not able to put two belts side by side inside of this tube. So we ended up sticking with chains. And then we used VersaBlock bearing mounts to um, allow us to put loosely positioned non-tolerance clearance holes in the drive rails um, and then the blocks would position the axles rather than precisely having to machine those those bearing holes in the drive rails. Um, so those those Versa blocks support that axle and are tensioned with these uh, cams that are that are located right here. Um, so what you're looking at here is the drivetrain that we, we developed over the summer. Uh, this particular version had four inch wheels. Um, it was 29 inches wide and 27 inches long. And it had a, had a bumper height of six and a quarter inches. And it had just a little bit less than an inch of ground clearance. What we ended up doing, we made some minor modifications for the 2018 game where we went from four inch wheels to five inch wheels to increase the, the ground clearance. And we added uh, a, an outside frame perimeter that bumped the interior dimensions of the robot larger so that we could fit more stuff inside. The frame perimeter now being 28 wide by 33 long, which was the max that was allowed. What we're going to build is one of these drive rails that we built for the 2018 game. So what you're looking at on the screen here is our 2018 competition robot, Genome Kappa. The heart of this robot is our drivetrain. And the drivetrain consists of drive rails on either side with ladder bars that hold them apart those are connected with riveted angle brackets in the corners. The ladder bars and the drive rails are fabricated from tubing that we buy ahead of time. The ladder bars are one, by, one inch by two inch tubing. The drive rails are one and a half inch by two inch tubing. Those are one and a half inch wide so that we can fit drive chains inside of them so that our drive wheels are driven by chains that are completely protected on the inside of these drive rails. The chains are driven by a custom gearbox. This gearbox is made of laser cut plates, one on either side, that are made out of Delrin, and a bunch of commercial off-the-shelf gears and motors and spacers and hardware and some tubing spacers that we cut from tubing uh, the same way that we cut our drive rails and ladder bars from tubing. And then this drive rail assembly uh, has some Versa blocks from VexPro that hold the wheel bearings. Uh, there's a bearing here and bearing on this side and there is a clearance hole here in the drive rail for a hex shaft axle to go through. There's the axle to go through. And these um, VersaBlock assemblies clamp together with screws that sit right here and here. And so, and they're, and they're tensioned by these cams that sit right in here. So on kickoff day, the first question we ask ourselves as a team is whether or not our standard drivetrain design can be used, modified in some small way sometimes, uh, to play that year's game. Ever since 2014, when we started using this, this design, the answer has always been yes. We've been able to tweak it in various ways to make it work. This year, for instance, we put on five inch wheels instead of four inch wheels to give ourselves a little bit of extra ground clearance and 
we ended up making our bumper brackets a little taller so that the, the bumper rails would clear the tops of the five inch wheels. And we stretched the gearboxes a little bit taller so that the motors would clear the tops of the wheels. And so that's, that was the customization that we did for this year's game. So what we're going to build in this video series is one of these drive rail assemblies I will, we're not going to build bumper brackets. What we're going to build is this assembly right here. We're going to make a drive rail. We're going to make a gearbox. We're going to make the axles that the wheels mount onto. And we are going to assemble all of those parts into the drive rail. We're going to make the chains that, that are on the inside and we'll show you how to install those chains. Hopefully this will be useful to other people. Uh, we know that it's going to be useful to our incoming students that come in and can learn about this stuff. Um, if you have questions or comments about what we're doing, feel free to ask them in the questions at the bottom of the YouTube videos. Um, you can ask them in the, on the threads on Chief Delphi, or you can private message uh, the mentors on the team and we will um, answer your questions to the best that we can. Our hope is that you all will take these techniques and designs and improve upon them. And um, hopefully you'll all be better prepared to be more competitive next year. So let's build a drivetrain.